Great. This is Jen Healy, and I'm back with another dynamic strength training that I came up with with my girl, Nadia, who owns a studio in Marin. And she was looking for something new for her students. And these are all sequences that I've done separately, but we're putting together putting them together for a nice routine. And I'm calling them dynamic movements and strength training because it does incorporate a lot more than the basic and restorative that we've done. But we're gonna start out nice and slow, warm up with our full body hang. We're gonna get into our wrist wraps and come out till about 10 and two on our mats, a little bit wider if you're comfortable, and just let the body hang. Nice and easy to begin. So we can go around in circles and do semi-circles. We're trying to stretch the shoulders, the full length of the spine, and just let it feel good. Taking your time to warm up slowly because we are gonna get into some really cool tricks and flips, but let's first work on strength. We're gonna come back through center, make sure we have a nice strong grip and lift our knees into the chest. Exhaling, squeeze, and inhale, expand, creating space for the vertebrae and then strengthening around that space. So 10 lifts if you can. You can always put one foot down and march, lifting one knee at a time as an alternative. And after we do 10 of those, we're gonna come back to our sumo and come into our helicopter spins. So we're gonna start with both feet over to the right and then step back behind you and then look underneath your armpit. Okay, so you're twisting your gaze in the opposite direction of your stance and then you pick up your feet and spin all the way to the other side. We're, we're aiming for nine and three on the mat if it was a clock. Okay, your gaze goes in the opposite direction of your front foot. Let's do that a few times. Warming up the spine, having some fun with it, floating, playing and traveling in the space and then we're gonna come back to our sumo. So now we're gonna do some arm strengthening. We're gonna just do some tiny bicep curls here, coming up onto your toes and lifting with your arms, which feels really good to get some strength through the upper body, but we don't have to do a full pull up. And if that is too much, we can shake it out and come down to the top of the leg loop, I call it the nub. And we're gonna come into some deep squats and we're gonna stay in a bicep curl and use mostly legs, okay? So nice and wide with the stance, toes turned out to 45 degrees. And then if you wanna do more arms, I'd say come all the way down and behind and then do some lifts here. So you can come down nice and low and use mostly arms to bicep curl up. So do 10 of those if that feels good to you. And whenever you need a break, we're gonna walk it out to the back of the mat and shake it out for a moment. If your hands get tired, that's pretty normal. So we're gonna go into some TRX moves at the back of the mat. We're gonna first use our leg loops and our hands. I like to use a wrist wrap or a wrist wrap twice, making an X. So decide which one you wanna do. If you can make an X over your wrist, so now it's completely bound and then grab, we're gonna lean back and we're gonna drop the hips. From here, you have to keep tension on the leg loops the whole time. We're gonna come into a seated position, almost like a child's pose, and then lift and pull, arch and open with a bicep curl. Exhale, lower. 10 of these if you can. Just using the leg loops in your hands, whatever grip is comfortable. Make sure you're really using your arms here and letting your chest lead the way. Head stays in line with the body. Awesome. Let's just do a couple more. 10 if you can. I don't always count. I just wait for my body to say, okay, that's enough. <laughs> so from here, we're gonna go right into our standing sequence. So you can stay holding on to the top of the leg loops or you can go for the hand holds. What we're gonna do is push the swing forward and create a little bit of a rhythm where we time it to get the right foot up. You wanna keep it bunched up at the ankle as much as possible. And then we're just gonna sink our hips forward and back. First start out nice and slow. Okay, we've done a lot of standing sequences previously, but we're gonna add in some fun dynamic movements along the way. 
Now we can always switch to holding on to the leg loops, which requires a little bit more balance, maybe go a little bit further, sinking the hips all the way back. Then inhale, bicep curl, lift and arch from the heart, press up onto the back toes, onto the ball of the foot, and come into a bigger version of splits, only as far as it feels good for today. Okay, exhale, leaning back, hang here and stretch through the spine, maybe wiggle the hips a little from side to side if that feels good. And then inhale, bicep curl, lift, splits, both legs straight, and then we're gonna to come to neutral. When we come to neutral, we can come into our forward lunge, moving a little bit faster than we normally do into a V, and then roll the back heel down into a side angle. So we press the back of the head into the swing and open it up. This might be as far as your people go. So from the back edge of the foot all the way to the fingertips is a nice long line of energy. You can always straighten the front leg, maybe grab for the toes and open it up, or just stay here and get a nice stretch through the hips. When you're ready to come up, reach up for the swing. Both hands grab, turn your heel up. We're coming back into our forward lunge, and then we push the swing down to the ankle. I like to push and pull in the space here so you can lift pulling back on the swing, and then you can press, getting a good stretch through the Achilles. I like to flex the toes back, and then even wiggle a little bit from side to side. I call it steering, okay? Pushing and pulling in the space, whatever feels good. You keep the head lifted, let the heart sink down towards the knee, but the back stays arched. We're not gonna round in this version, okay? There's also the option to coming into some twists hooking the forearm and gazing back behind you. With one hand, one arm or the revolve twist, go the opposite way, keep it even. So that's just our warm up lap to get the legs open. We're gonna go back into a wrist wrap, bend the knee out to the side. I like to call it a floating pigeon. So we can either just stand and keep our foot at the back of the mat or we can float. Knee is pressing down, and you can keep the foot flexed if that feels good. You can hook that knee over the foot. I call it I Dream of Genie, and play in the space. You can tilt the hips out to the side, alternate, maybe straighten the right leg, getting a deeper stretch. And then we're gonna get both feet in there. It's okay if you swing if you have space. Otherwise, you can just bring your foot down to the center of the mat and steady yourself under your plumb line and then come back in, okay? So knees out to the side, feet together. Uh, it's a version of Flying Monkey. We can bank a little from side to side again if that feels good. And then we can bicep curl, <laughs> lifting, keeping the hips pressed forward, getting some good strength in the upper body. Okay, now from here we have a few different variations we can do. We can straighten the legs. I'm gonna go ahead and bend both knees. I'm gonna get the top of the left foot into the swing. So my knee, my left knee comes through the center. I'm on my shin and then I slide into Nataraj. Right foot lands in the center of the mat. You can bend both knees and hang here. So your full weight drops down and you're kind of pressing back so your right knee stays in line with the ankle. You don't want your right knee to come forward and strain the joint, okay? Now, if your hands get tired, which they often do, holding on for so long, you can hold on to the top of the leg loops as well and go into a deeper stretch. Wherever you are, let it feel good. And then I usually just slide right down into the leg loops there, press into boat pose. You can come out for an airplane and get some good arm strengthening in here, both straight out in front of you, pressing down. All the legs are straight, all the arms are straight. <laughs> and then I slide right into an easy pose. Let's rest in our airplane. Okay, my hip stays right over the ankle joint. And I enjoy flying from side to side, just having some fun with it. When I wanna come out, I'm going to press all the way up to stand and just let my toes face the sky and my leg comes out. <laughs> Let's go into second side. Okay, we're just gonna repeat that whole sequence one more time. Holding on to the handholds, I'm gonna give the swing a little push. 
I'm going to practice timing it so I can get my left foot up there. When the swing goes forward all the way, that's when you want to lift your leg, okay? And then everybody can get your foot in there. So I just press forward and back with my hips, and I can stay upright for this version where it's nice and easy. You don't have to go too far, but you can get a really deep stretch through the legs, keeping the toes flexed back. Or I can switch to holding onto the top of the leg loops and go a little bit deeper, a little bit further. Both legs straight, both arms straight, and then inhale, bicep curl, lift and arch. Press, press, press all the way forward as far as possible. And then exhale, sink back. Inhale, press, lift and open. Nice bicep curl there, really strengthening the arms in this sequence. Exhale, lean back. When you lean back, you can wiggle the hips a little from side to side. That feels really good. Inhaling, lift. Exhale, press. Slide into a forward lunge by bending the left knee. Stay up onto the back toes for this version. All toes are pointing forward. Then we can come into a V. Think of it as like a victory pose where we lift the chest, open the arms, pressing the swing away. Then we slide into elbow, left elbow, left knee, roll the back heel down, press the back of the head into the left side of the swing, and your arm can come out on a diagonal if you have the balance. Otherwise, you can stay holding on to the swing, the top of the swing, wherever you can reach. And to come into the full standing splits, you can extend the leg. I call it revolver. You can twist and open it up, but only if it feels good. Just reach towards the foot unless you can grab. Come on up, hold on to the swing with both hands. Turn all the toes forward once again. Come back to center. Press the swing down to the ankle. And I push and pull in the space. Inhale, lift. Lean back. Exhale, press. Let's do that a few times. Really opening up the back of the legs. Keeping the alignment of the spine. Moving from the arch behind the heart. Head stays in line with the tailbone and then steer from side to side. Oh, such a good stretch for the back of the calf. All the way into the IT band actually, really big opening there. Okay, and then we're gonna hook with our forearm and twist, standing twist, looking back towards your thumb. Inhale, both arms hook and switch sides, exhale, revolver. So we twist once again. Beautiful. And then we're going to come forward, bending the knee out to the side for a standing pigeon. I like using a wrist wrap so we can transition to floating. So once you hold on, you can have a little swing if you have the space or just bring your foot down to the center of the mat and we'll be right underneath our plumb line. Toes stay flexed. Let the knee press down towards the earth. Maybe hook right foot, right leg over left foot. And I dream of Jeannie playing with twisting and opening up to the sides. Straighten the left leg, keep the right knee bent and twist to the other side, playing in the space. We're gonna come back to do our nataraj on this side, but we also wanna play with, I'm gonna add another pose here, which from Flying Monkey, we can bicep curl, pull ourselves up and come into a version of Supta Bada. So I'm gonna bring my hands forward, holding on to the outer edge of the swing and then lowering myself down. This is a nice addition where we're letting the knees be wide, feet are glued together, and the upper body is completely relaxed towards the floor. Again, you can stay right underneath your plumb line or have a little bit more swag, whatever feels good to you. Okay, when I wanna come out of it, I can just reverse it. I can reach up and grab and then sink my hips down and pull myself up. That's one version, or we can add a flip here. So I'm gonna take the leg loops in my hands. I'm gonna do a little push up to come level with the earth. And then when I extend my arms, I can do a little bit more strengthening. This is good preparation for Superfly, where I get the underbelly of the arms engaged. It works really well for that flaggy part of the arms, the jiggly part. And then I can actually push, put these on the shoulders like I'm coming into a skydiver. Bank from side to side. We do this from another variation that I'll show you in a little bit here. 
And then if I want to do a flip, I'm going to reach up and grab for the leg loops. I have to make sure they're really tight on the top of my shoulders. I can lift my hips and you have to use a little up, turn it over and sit in the swing. <laughs> make sure you stay holding on, really important. And then from there, I can go right into my naturage. I'm gonna sink my hips back. Let's do second side. So the right foot, the top of the right foot finds the inside of the swing. And then I can transition left foot to the center of the mat. I can go back to holding on to my hand holds, sinking the hips down, bending both knees, or I can use the top of the leg loops. Just pick your favorite variation. Okay, wherever you are, long lines of energy, big stretch through the quad, and then I'm gonna transition right into boat, straight arms, straight legs, long lines of energy still, and then you can come out really hard, airplane wings. So <laughs> all of these poses, you can pulse to get the upper body strength, really engaging through the core and using the underbelly of the arms really plugging in here, keeping the alignment, making sure that you are steady. And then the easier version of airplane is putting the leg loops on the shoulders, which I call backpack, and then being able to sway from side to side, banking, opening it up. If I wanna end with another flip, I'm gonna pull my hands down towards the ground, and just watch my feet here, if you can watch for one round. I'm gonna lift and press my left foot into basically the top of my right foot where the swing is. So I create a little lock. And then I can lift my hips towards the sky. Come on down, I'll show you one more time. So when I lift, I'm gonna press my feet towards one another with the swing locked in between, okay? and then I can do a bit of a shoulder stand there. Come on down. All right, there are a few additions that we can add to our standing sequence to make it a little bit more dynamic. And then I turn my toes to towards the sky, come on out. And now we're gonna go back and we're gonna review our Supta Baddha, that inversion that we did coming in through our floating Buddha, which is how I normally teach it. So there's a few flips that we can do from there. So we're gonna come in through our sumo, get our leg loops on at the ankles, and just take a little pause. <laughs> so I have this broken up into three different sequences. That was our standing sequence. Now we're gonna go into variations of Supta Baddha, and then we're gonna end with some side spins, revisiting our high flyers, but also checking out our black swan for sit and spin. These are all the things that we did the other day, and I just thought it'd be cool to put it together in one video instead of having to search for these different poses in seven different videos. So just putting it all together, it feels really good as a sequence, as a routine. So from my floating Buddha, I'm gonna come on back to center. I get into Supta Baddha by bending the knees, bringing my feet together. I slide up the leg loops with my hands as high as possible for flying monkey. Push the hips up and lean back. So it looks really similar to what we did from the standing sequence. Then we bicep the curl up to sit on the ankles. I'm gonna come through. I have to keep the swing behind me at first and I get in front of the leg loops with my arms. And then I lower myself down. So, et voila, I'm in the same position but now using the leg loops and the main swing is free. So we can always come out of it by reversing. You just reach up, grab onto the leg loops and pull yourself up. That would be kind of the easier version. <laughs> then there are some flips here. First flip that I'll show you is holding on to the swing and you have to twist it overhead and pull yourself up. Okay, once it's overhead, then it looks really similar to what we did before. And there's a flip called the full Nelson where you put it underneath your, behind your neck then underneath your shoulders, and then you hold on. You have to tuck and kick, and when you come to sit, you can wind up with the leg loops at the knees and make sure the swing is behind you. That was a little bit challenging. <laughs> That's why we call it a more dynamic movement. I'm gonna come back into Supta Baddha and show you a couple others that are really fun. All, this can, all these can be done with the leg loops spread out as well. So when I do a more restorative version, I spread the leg loops out over the heels, and then the full length of the calves. 
So I'm going to come down again. So without using the swing, I'm going to reach up for the leg loops as high as I can. If I can grab what I call the nub, it's really helpful because it's a great handhold. So from here, I stay arched to open up the chest, and then I tuck, pull, flip, and kick, and I wind up sitting in the swing. So this is all part of the acrobatic sequences that I teach. It's not normally in my restorative and therapeutic, so I don't do them all the time. But there is another really cool flip here called kamikaze that I wanna show you guys. We can do this with the leg loops on the arches of the feet, but let's try them at the ankles, okay? First thing we have to do is create an X so the leg loops don't slide up, okay? If they slide up, then it's gonna be hard to flip. So there's a couple different versions, but we wanna reach up as high as we can, like we did for our flying monkey, but the leg loops are X, and then we're gonna lean forward, go through center, and flip. Now, if you try it on the arch of the foot, you have a little bit more control and support. So let's try that. So you either X the leg loops so they stay on or push through the feet. And this way, when you inhale, bicep curl, lean forward, it's a big split, pull the feet together, hips overhead, and then come to sit. Really fun, okay? You can do that kind of like an infinite number of times, which is also the really cool part of the sequence is you can keep flipping through center. <sighs> Let's take a little break here. <laughs> Try that a few more times. You can always pause the video and come back to it because it is a little tricky. It is scary to do. I call it a kamikaze because whenever you do a front flip like that and you feel like you're going to face plant, <laughs> it's a little scary. But I promise you, if you stay holding on, you're hooked and you're good. So now we're going to move on to our side spins. I went through those pretty fast, so take a pause to catch your breath. I'm going to unwind the swing, because after we do flips, it winds up twisting the daisy chains. So you just kind of reverse it, <laughs> reverse all those spins so that the daisy chains don't get all twisted up, okay? So I'm just throwing the leg loops through center and turning the swing over until these are straight again. Okay. So now what we want to do is go back and revisit our standing sequence. And we're first going to add another flip. So these are called uh, my inverted splits. I like to start with the leg loops in my hands and just give the swing a little kick like we've done before. Time it to get the right foot up there. Now make sure it's really bunched up. Right? So you really want to make sure that it's on the arch of the foot and bunched up. And then we're going to practice just lifting the hips. Once you lift the hips, you can straighten the leg. You can add these on to the standing splits like we did before. But just see if you can lift. You can use a little momentum to kick up. So to do these, you have to lift the hips, press them up the whole time, keep the legs straight, keep pushing into the swing. Otherwise, that <laughs> the fabric will come off and then come on back down. There's a whole sequence we can do from here, but just practice the standing splits. And then next week, I'll show you guys how to come into the soar and then the inverted angel wings. But it's really fun to get some momentum and come all the way up. You have to stay arched, strong through the arms. And then you can actually switch legs, but I'll show you that next week <laughs> and try the other side and coming into splits. Okay, since that's all I show, showed Nadia, that's all we're gonna do today. And then when you're ready to come down, just come to sit. We can come through our Natura sequence then, but we're just gonna do the inverted splits. One little bite-sized piece and then you'll have something to look forward to for next week. We are gonna come to stand at the center of the mat and add in some side spins. So. I usually like to start out show, showing you these from standing. So we're gonna go ahead and push the swing down to the waist. When you lean back, your feet come forward so your bum stays right underneath your plumb line. Wrap just the right leg around. When we wrap the right leg around, we can stand in the center of the mat again and extend 
Now, when we extend the leg, you roll the belly forward down towards the ground. So most people go back, right? So again, just think of like face diving, <laughs> the face plant that we're doing in all these poses. Long lines, so the back leg stays straight. You want your body level with the earth to do the spin. You can hold on with one hand or both hands. The leg loop is there as a little training wheel. And then your standing leg is gonna go back behind you, over your head, and then forward to the front of the mat, okay? If you keep leaning forward, that'll happen with grace and ease. <laughs> if it doesn't come gracefully yet, just keep practicing it until you smooth out the edges. Because all we're doing is using some pivot points to create the angular momentum. Let's try a second side, L hook the left leg, right foot in the center of the mat. You're pointing your toes to the right to roll your belly down. Once you roll your belly down, you can hold on to the leg loop. That'll be your little training wheel. Let your head be level with the earth so you can lift your back leg, pick up your standing leg, spin it through center, and then come to sit. Okay, let's do it a little bit faster. Now that we got the movement down, I'm gonna hook my right leg, come to stand. This time I'm not gonna use my training wheel, I'm gonna line it up, get set up, and then I'm just going to spin using the momentum. Okay, second side, left leg hooks, come to stand, keep the legs straight, that's key, and level with the earth. I lean forward, spin my leg through center, we come to sit. So we're gonna use that flip to get into Jedi kicks, okay? There's one more side spin before we go there. That's really fun that I wanna show you, and that is through Black Swan. And I'm not gonna do the whole sequence, I'm just gonna uh, expedite the process to get you to the sit and spin. We'll end with the Jedi kicks. So Black Swan first. So we come into forward folds to get into our black swan. We push the swing down so it hits the legs. Press the hips forward, arms come down, and then I'm gonna immediately wrap my right leg outside in. And now from standing splits, I'm gonna come into my twist. Right leg, right leg, right arm lifts up. Reach back behind you to grab for the swing Turn your toes out to the side, and you spin to a half moon, okay? So like I said, I'm moving a little bit faster. I'm gonna reach up, grab for the top of the swing with both hands. I'm gonna come to a cross-legged position, hammock. I'm gonna bicep curl and spin out. Whee! So that's a really fun side spin that you can add to the black swan sequence. Let's go to the other side. We have two legs, so we get to try it again. First, we come into our forward folds. Left leg is gonna lift, hook outside in, straighten the leg towards the sky, standing splits, and then we add a twist. So left leg, left arm, that's how we remember which way to go. We reach for the back edge of the swing. We're gonna swim out to half moon. You just turn your toes out to the side and you use the momentum. For this version, we're just gonna climb up to the top of the swing, we're doing a faster version. I'm gonna hold on tight, and then from there, I'm gonna kick into hammock. If you wanted to come into a bigger hammock, I actually press my foot into the swing to get there. Otherwise, cross the ankles, you're gonna bicep curl and spin through center, Whee! <laughs> and come on out. So those are the side spins, that's sit and spin, really fun. All righty, the grand finale. Again, we're going through these really fast, so you can always pause and try it again. Visit the, back, the black swan sequence in totality if you wanna take that whole bit, that whole routine nice and slow. But from here, what I wanna do is come into a high flyer that is our inversion with the swing at the waist. So I'm going to wrap both legs around. Even coming into high flyer, is a pose in itself. What I wanna do is learn how to use the pivot points of the hips. So I'm gonna do some big sit-ups, reaching for the toes, getting your core strength, making sure that you have the ability to open up the legs and drop the hips. 
Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time, a little bit slower. So legs stay straight the whole time. I reach up, grab for the ankles. I hold on to the swing. So right now my tailbone faces the sky, and then my tailbone is gonna face forward and then down towards the ground, okay? And therefore when we keep the legs straight, we're just using the pivot points, it's really fun. All right, let's add in our side spins. I'm gonna go ahead and use just one leg loop. Let's use the, um, the right one for you first. I come forward, remember we come forward in all these poses. So I'm gonna lean forward, spin out to the side. My top leg is gonna go through the center. I have to grab the swing, and now I'm in my side spin. I release the handhold and come through center again. Very cool. Now that was very, very, very slow motion. It's actually harder to do it slower. So I'm gonna do it a little bit faster on the other side. Show you one more time. I come through my high flyer. Swing is at the waist. I wrap my legs around straight. Big sit up. Pull yourself up. Hi, skydiver. We're not using the leg loops for this one so they can just stay out of the way as much as possible. Okay, I use a wrist wrap. I lean forward. Leg goes through center, grab for the swing, kind of slow the momentum for a second. So my foot does not touch down for these versions. You can always touch it down and it looks just like our side spins. So you have to release the handhold, belly comes forward and down, and you pick up the leg through center. Okay, now we're gonna piece all that together for Jedi kicks and do it quickly. Do it slow a few more times before you try it quick because you might lose a hook, okay? You're not gonna go far, but you'll be like, what happened when you come out? Okay, legs wrap, big sit up, come on up, high, high flyer, wrist wrap. I'm using the right side through center, grab the swing, through center, come to sit. Always a crowd pleaser. Now that is more for fun and more for show, but I have to tell you, once you learn the physics of the body and the pivot points, it's a whole lot of fun because it becomes effortless, okay? So look for those videos individually. That is called the Jedi Kicks. We did the Black Swan sit and spin. We went into inverted splits. We went into soup to bada. We did our standing sequence. And what else did we do? Oh, we did the full body hang to begin. This is Jen Healy. You can find out more about my program at arielyogaplay.com. You can also look up the Arex online for my online courses. That's A-Y-R-X.online. And I look forward to seeing you next time with some more dynamic movements and strength training. Bye for now.